This is Vinod Shekhar. Welcome to Shekhar Not Stirred. Today we have Dato Aflin Shauki, Alf, to me for a very long time because I've known him for a very long time because um, we're both getting very old. Aflin's, of course, a renowned director, producer, comedian, writer, apparently quite sexy. I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Um, the chief executive of Petra Media, one of the fastest growing um, film entertainment groups in the country and the region. Um, I can sort of boast about that because, you know, it's Petra. <laughs> um, but I'm very proud that he's my friend and he's here uh, soon after his 50th birthday to join us. Welcome, Aflin. Hello. You see, why are you all Englishmen on me? Apakaba. How are you? I'm okay, yeah. you know, madness going around around this. Better, better, you know, better. Parliament zoo session ongoing. <laughs> you know, I thought I'd be bored, but now I can watch that every once better. in a while for. We think that there's nothing on TV to watch now. Suddenly, it's like the best mellow yeah, drama. Don't, but don't you find very disappointing when at night yeah. you want to get a bit of thing, you go on to the Parliament session, that do. Uh. So now you have to go rewind and yeah. find the sessions. They, to have some fun. They should keep the parliament going on. Actually, you know, in America, but it's the same. Uh, politics is the number one source of comedy for late night. And when Biden won, suddenly they're dried up. You know? So for you, this is a gift that keeps giving. This, this is a gift. Look what's, at, it, uh, what's his name? Douglas. Ah, Douglas, Douglas is Douglas. using this. A day. Douglas is now you know, exploding on, on oh, social media. We've got to get Douglas on this sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it will be good. Afne, what does it feel like to be 50? We met when you were 17. We became friends when you were yeah, 17. Yeah. Oh, um, you're now 50. Yeah. Tengah century, bro. I never actually thought that I would ever reach 50. Kita, what, sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Yeah. Kita, kita <laughs> I started off with music, apa semua kan. Nampak but then macam, you miss the drugs, <laughs> you miss <laughs> the alcohol. <laughs> okay, I, sex, I don't want to get into. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but itulah, that's, that's the being a, a Muslim entertainer. Uh, itulah yang kita hadapi lah, ya. Yeah? Uh, kita tak boleh naik. We, we can't really do all the other vices, but you know, we, we try right. to look for vices. By the way, this is what they all say. Hmm. We'll accept it on no, this value. is the general, general <laughs> line that we have to deliver to everybody. And it's mostly true. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we learn a lot, you know. Uh, and when I see the new artists today, I realise, wow, I was so like that before. You know, we were very brash. We, we wanted to do things. We believed anything could be done. And at a certain point in our life, we realized this is so tough. Wait, you were 17, I was 19. We yeah, launched you were 19. The, yeah, yeah, I was 19. Yeah. We launched the first uh, Malaysiana Muda dinner. That's right. That's right? right. The first multiracial youth organization, non-partisan in the country I've ever seen. Betul. Betul. You, um, uh, uh, Zainal. Zainal. Is that, was Sheila there? Yeah, Sheila was there. Sheila, Zainal. Zainal and uh, Ame. Ame, Ame Yusuf. Yusuf. Yeah, yeah. Uh, R.A.P. Rosan Aziz Betul. arranged it. Betul. Betul. And that was your first ever live concert. Yes, because it was a concert. Yeah, it was a concert. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. a concert. And I remember. And we, you were introduced as Elf. Elf. Yeah. Elf. 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 It seems I'm the only one that calls you Elf. My friends in college called, still call me Elf. Elf uh, was what I used to be called. Yeah. But when they went to, um, went to the album phase, they decided. You know, Elf sounds too masaleh lah. You want, you need to be a bit more Melayu like you, something. Huh? Yeah. So Afdolin Shauki <laughs> became the thing. <laughs> so, so it became like that. But coming back to that, we, I remember what it was done. It was done in the Pan Pacific. Remember? That's right. Yes. Yeah, the the, yeah. the ballroom. The ballroom. And uh, I still remember the songs that I sang because those I wanted to do songs which I I felt I was in, I was very into soul music and and R&B, so uh, didn't have any of my own songs yet back then. So I sang uh, an Olita Adams song and I think a Simply Red song as well. It was great to meet you. At such a young age, I saw this guy who was like running around, like, hey, you think this is really organizing something for the good of people. I think that's one of the first times I've encountered um, that kind of work, you know, where where... You guys were doing charity work. And so at that point, at 17, it was like, charity, eh? I'm still trying to... I'm my biggest charity at that point, <laughs> you know, and my family. So, but at 19, you were already thinking about others. So, 
it's it's quite a nice you know well, look where we are now exactly exactly uh-huh. no, what 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 got you into doing that at 19 at Malaysian Muda and helping out what 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 got you into that well it's very simple you and i grew up in a a, a school system hmm. that was very multiracial betul kita tak kisah ke orang Cina, orang Melayu, orang India, betul, it doesn't matter, betul, right? Betul. Chinese, Malay, Indians, all the same to us, yeah, yeah. right? We made fun of the Chinese, we made fun of the Indians, we made fun of the Malays, <laughs> exactly. and we all laughed together. Exactly. It exactly. really didn't matter. Betul. We went to each other's houses, it really didn't matter. Yes. The open houses meant something. Yeah, it yeah, was right. real open houses, everyone yeah. went to each other. The teachers were wonderful. Yeah. The teachers taught us to be open and, and, and accepting of yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, it was a wonderful period. Mm. And I found as I was going to university and i saw in malaysia this polarization occurring mm-hmm. and uh, what i believe uh, mahadev mohammad was doing mm-hmm. which was causing more polarization mm-hmm. among the people mm-hmm. you know separating people classifying mm-hmm. human beings telling the malays you're dumb you're stupid you need my help you're dumb you're stupid they're going to take advantage of you mm-hmm. right you say that often enough pavlov's theory right yeah they're going to believe eventually it. they just believe it lah yeah right and and which nonsense huh? mm-hmm. this country was built by malay technocrats mm-hmm. if not for the malay civil servants and the malay technocrats mm-hmm. after independence mm-hmm. we would not be a strong holistic economically vibrant society that we became because they were the ones highly educated they were the ones that understood what all races needed and brought everyone together That's right. That's right. so this nonsense that the malays cannot do it is nonsense. Yeah. But I learned that it was all parties. Yeah. The Indian party wanted to make sure the Indians were dumb yeah. and stupid and just listen to them. Right. Right? You better be careful. If not for me, yeah. the Malays will take advantage of you. The yeah, Chinese right. will steal from yeah. you. You will have nothing. Betul. Right? The Chinese were told you better be careful yeah. otherwise your children will become Muslim. Yes. They won't be able to speak Chinese anymore. Right? Yeah. and then you know you're you're not going to have your own education and so this went on the mm-hmm. malays are told the chinese are going to take everything from you exactly your religion from you your language from you your culture mm-hmm. from you mm-hmm. and this this just seemed to go on and on and it was fake because if you go down to the ground if you went to the kampongs and all that my god they were kind they were loving they were warm yeah. they would give up anything doesn't matter what race you are so the people didn't have a problem yeah. it's the politician that decided i need this to stay in power Yeah, it because. became clear to me. So Malaysia and Muda, when we we created it, the group mm-hmm. of us created it. It was to say enough. We need to bring the youth together. Yeah. We need to make them understand that it doesn't matter. You can argue, you can disagree, mm. but you're all Malaysians. Mm. If you accept that you're Malaysians first, that you're Malaysians, then we're all together. You can believe you want an Islamic state. That's fine. Mm. Explain to me, as a non-Muslim, why I benefit and why it would be good for me. Mm. Then I will explain to you what my fears are. Mm. then you know my fears yeah. i understand what you're coming from yeah. because even from an islamic state perspective let's be yeah. clear there is an argument because it's a welfare state yeah. it's about making sure everyone's all right yeah. making sure everyone has food and things so there are debates that can go on mm. but instead of those debates people just to extreme views mm. just to force exactly. people into a political position yeah. so malaysia and muda was an attempt to at least get the young mm. to understand or be open right about all possibilities attempt la to to understand each other right this is what I, i feel about what's happening today before it was easy to do a divide and conquer uh, tactic right because in the beginning you managed to unite kids in school but when they, once they leave school you got to start dividing them because again once you're dividing them you get your, the power right it was easier then because lack of communication yeah meaning i can just tell my malay group that these people are evil you know and these people who don't normally mix would then suddenly think oh maybe you're right you know because that's why i'm suffering that's why my life is so hard right and i think that that is one of the reasons why now it's becoming harder for people to do this the challenge we had then was communication to get it across to as many people as possible exactly. we didn't have social media that's right we that's didn't right. have internet yeah but i mean i only started what the commercial internet company below 1994 Yeah, wait. That that's the other thing. You started the internet company in Malaysia, right? Yeah. You're like the father of all the TikTokers right now. You know? In Southeast Asia and Malaysia, that's <laughs> me. Of course, my daughter will now tell you my father is useless. <laughs> Computer also don't know how to make work. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> then there was no social media. Mm. 
there was no instant news. Betul. There was, you know, communication was. We didn't have mobile phones, bro. Yeah. Remember, you make phone calls. <laughs> you make phone calls, physical phone calls yeah, in the yeah. house. Oh, Aflin there. Oh, he's already left. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to meet him there at <laughs> three. How do I tell him I'm going to be t- 15 minutes? Yeah. You know, it, you 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 made an appointment. Yeah. You had to go meet someone there because everything communication was through landlines. Yeah. Phone number and then remember oh. the payphones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you know what? I, I remember the payphones became such a, a commodity for us because then we started learning how to use payphones which is like how to get the number of the payphone yeah so get people to call the payphone call the payphone we'll pick up and talk from there <laughs> it was uh, it was i mean it was interesting time it was right? so interesting. today i think why even the current politicians very few of them understand this mm. uh, some you can see in parliament still don't get it yeah you see how they act in parliament yeah. that now with social media technology yeah. media technology information flow you can't hide anything it just comes out yeah right good or bad it comes out yeah right it's going to be there to see yeah. so when you act the way you act in parliament it's being seen by everyone That's and true. more than that it's being recorded for posterity we are going That's everyone's true. going to see it over yeah. and over again uh, and people are learning and i think they are finding now this inability to lie to the people cheat the people so you know uh, this fear tactics mm. is slowly diminishing Mm. What I'm hoping is the younger generation of politicians will learn now. Look, Malaysia can only exist if we're together. Mm. Whether anyone likes it or not, this is a multiracial country. We thrive as a multiracial. The one unique thing mm. that makes us stand out from every other country in the world mm. is we are truly multiracial, multiethnic, multireligious, mm. multilingual. True. No one else is like us. Yeah, yeah. And we are modern. And yeah. we are God's country. We are blessed with so many resources. That's right. Right, yeah. so I keep saying this lah. Kita ni ya, we argue over the the crumbs. There's a big pie, yeah. humongous pie, yeah. and we argue over the crumbs instead yeah. of saying, "Hey, let's work together and take that whole damn pie." Yeah, yeah. So that's it. But I want to come back to you. Yeah. You started out as a singer. Mm. What made you move into cinema? Because you were a very good singer. Yeah. You're a very popular singer. Mm. Your album was a hit, but you you just transition suddenly to to, to media to film. It was because of uh, my love for cinema uh, from a young age. Because we were very poor, poor family, right? The entertainment that we got was pretty much from TV. And whenever my dad had extra money, he would take us to the cinema. So cinema became we went to the cinema, and it was such a big deal for me. No, and I, we went through all the uh, stages of okay. You get the second class seat, which is right in front, looking up like that. Into okay, first class go sit at the back, and then you get the special class, which is upstairs. And you know, we went through. Oh, today, today we we're going to the the special class or upstairs or first class, and then and then we we just enjoyed our moments. And I remember one of the first movies that. Uh, my dad actually brought me to watch uh, a Malay movie called Mechanic. Right before that, we've been watching Piramli on TV and so on. Already that my whole thing was how can this man Piramli create so much joy in in all the people? Look at my grandparents are laughing. My mom and dad they're, they're laughing, and I'm just like and multiracial, was, right? Yeah, and multiracial, and I was so amazed at that. And I became a person who said, you know what? One day I want to make people happy like that. Well, you know, you and I are bringing Pi Ramli home. We're going to get Pi Ramli home. This We are thing. going to bring Pi Ramli home. This is the thing, yeah. which is Petra in... Media will bring Pi Ramli home. Yeah. But but you're right. right? Pi Ramli represented all of us. Yeah, betul. I often say, sign up Malaysia. Pi Ramli bring Malaysia. I I want Pi Ramli's Malaysia. Yeah. I want that P, that Malaysia back. Yeah. Right. That's what we need. See the other film that will move me. Uh, was mechanic, which was also a multiracial film, and who was in it? Uh, Osman Hafsham, the Sue Lancaster, there was. Uh, was Sue Lancaster? Uh, Sue Lancaster. I keep forgetting Sue Lancaster when <laughs> we were kids. Was <laughs> yeah, hot. But, uh, she was hot, right? Yeah. yeah right? I, hey, don't I mean, say she was hot. She's very upset. Okay, she's, hot she's still hot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was hotter <laughs> then. Okay. As a child, I was like, okay, this is the actress crush I'm having right now. You know, <laughs> Sue Lancaster, and uh, and. Pretty much, that also mechanic was a, a a movie, a comedy which then involved all races, whatever, and it and and it was funny, entertaining. And I watched that movie. I think my dad, I made my dad bring me to see that movie in the cinema at least five times. What developed in me was this innate 
need to make people happy. And I started out by doing shows for my grandparents. For my grandfather, I, I record stories. In, he, he got me this tape recorder. I don't know, because nobody knows what a tape recorder is right now. <laughs> that started when my grandmother started telling me stories before I go to sleep. And then my grandfather started taking the tape, uh, the cassette, and what he'd do is he'd get into his car, he'd go pick up all his friends to sit in the car and play the cassette. This is my grand grandchild, you know, he bought story. And every time after that, I see those uncles, the uncles were like, very talented, huh? give you fighting it. They were like, what? Well, so I can make money now. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. Make people happy, can make money. But it, it became this big thing for me. And that's why singing got me to one, one part of it, which I can, you know, people enjoy it themselves. But to me, to me, I felt like it was very short. Then I wanted to see whether I could do this. And the reason why I actually stepped up to, to actually direct was the fact that at one point, I didn't see any Malay movies I liked. I was like, why are they making movies that I want to watch, right? Yeah, yeah. So I decided I want to do something. And what I did was, I went to a, a, a media prima company, Grand Billions. I, I had a story called Bully. And the bully, story is about people with um, inferiority complexes, which is the story about Malays, actually. And, but I, I, my style is, I try to put all those issues I want to talk about within the, the story that you might not even see, but it's there. The issues are there. So it became a story about a guy with no self-confidence who gets bullied at his office by the bully from the school. And, uh, but he, he, he finds, somehow he finds that he can get more confident and he's helped through sharing this problem with somebody else, which is something Malays don't do as well. Mm. We don't share whatever issues we have with other people. We tend to keep it inside and then just explode and run amok. And... Uh, so this is something which I want. And that first film, <laughs> I remember how I, I, I had to pitch, right? So I'm like, how am I going to show? Because by that time, I've won Best Actor in the Malaysian Film Festival for a film I did. Now, that's my only cred, right? And I've, done, I've directed some TV. So I said, how do I convince these guys that I know what I'm going to do, right? So I also was involved with comics. So I got a friend of mine who drew comics. He said, let's storyboard the whole film. So when we went to pitch, I gave them my script and I gave them the whole movie, how I saw it in comics. And when they saw it, they was like, okay, we like, the, we like what, what you see in your head and we'll do it. And, and it was my first pitch and I got a green light straight away. And after getting involved, in filmmaking, I realized this is what I love. And pretty much so, not so much, I mean, yeah, everybody wants to make money, but what really affected me is when I did Bully at the end of the film, and when it went out, I got emails from people saying that, you know, that movie really helped me. You know, that movie, because one of the things it did is, I, I went into a mental hospital, a mental ward at a university hospital and I became a helper. And I, I spent almost weeks there to understand what's actually happening mm. in the mental ward. So there's a lot of depression, there's a lot of, mainly depression. So you saw all this very early on. Yeah. I mean, you know, mental health yeah. is only now becoming something yeah. that we're talking about, but yeah. even then not enough. Yeah. Even yeah. then, it's not in the forefront. It's in the forefront. The government's not really paying attention to yeah. it. I mean, we can see, I mean, we can't talk about how many top psychologists, psychiatrists there are in Malaysia. But no one exactly. talks about it, right? Exactly. Uh, it's still something, and, and it is a serious illness. It's yeah. a serious problem. You, this thing is getting real. Even for us right now in the country, it's so real. Well, I mean, look, it leads to suicide. Yeah. It leads to loss of work. It leads to inability to work. Yeah. Uh, and then also it leads to violence. Exactly. In, among families exactly. and households. So it's a major problem. But okay. You became a movie, you're now, okay. You're now Aflin Shauki. Mm. Remember, we flew to Sabah? Yeah. You know, this is, this is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought I'm the VIP. I mean, you it's, my, are, it's, it's VIP. my freaking plane. We're arriving in Sabah, all right? Coming out, walking there, right? And then suddenly, who was it? I think it was Sushil and a couple of others looking yeah. amazing. Where's, where's Aflin? Of course, you 
could not walk more than three, <laughs> four, five feet before someone stops and says, "Hey, photograph, photograph, come, 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 come." You, you, you become that huge star mm. that everyone seems to love and everyone wants, wants a, a piece of, mm. right? And now you've entered politics, mm. right? So you know, you know what I always say, and this is the truth, you know, which is I, I am happy being able to do what I do because it makes me happy to see other people happy. I have never had this need to have a plane or whatever, but I'm so happy I have a friend who has a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to maintain the plane. <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't regret the choice I made in making films. It's a, it hasn't been like a just great ride. I mean, I've all, people told me, you know, Aflin, if you were in the States, yeah, 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 if I was in the States, I would, I'd be making money. But I'm not. When I'm here, I'd like to make a difference. Whatever difference I can make, you know, my idol has always been Piramli, like I said, because of what he intended and what he wanted. Something to we do. share. Now, a lot of people wonder. Yeah. You suddenly joined Petra. Yeah. You suddenly. Vision Works is now a Petra company. It's Petra Vision Works. Okay. And it's Petra Studios. Mm. Shumi Baba is, mm. is, is part of your, the, the group mm. with you. You mm. know, your, your, uh, your colleagues are Darren Shaw. Your, mm. You've got all this talent. You've got television mm. and movies under. What made you make that shift? You've done everything on your own, mm. right? That's something remarkable about you. You stood up on your own. You've refused to let anyone come into your company. You've refused to sell your company mm. for, what, 20 years now, at least? Yeah, 22 years. 22 years. What made you decide to take this leap? What I'm doing right now is okay for me. When, when I was making that choice, right? I had enough for my family, I had enough for my parents, I had enough just for us to be comfortable. And then, uh, I think in 2012, I went into doing work uh, with NGOs to help people. And that's when I realized, I need more money. <laughs> I need more money to help people. I'm like an open book, you know. I'm just like, what I'm doing now is enough for me. And that's, I don't think this is what I'm meant for. I, I think I'm meant to be able to do bigger things and to use whatever God has given me to help others. And when it became a real thing and a real important thing for me that I started to come back and realize, how can I make this bigger? At, you know, at one point, I, 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 I achieved all my dreams. I have a dream board. Whatever I want, I got really. So that's why it's just like, mm, okay lah. But then when I started doing my, uh, my work with people and, 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 you know, supporting and, and helping people, I realized I needed to have more dreams and bigger dreams and new dreams. In the dream board, one of the main things is to help people, you know, because I've done what I could in my earlier part of my life to bring myself to a certain stage. To the next stage, I realized I can't do it on my own. You know, I cannot. I need to see someone or find someone who is willing to go on this journey. And uh, the best part of it, when I met you again, is you were doing the same things that I wanted to do. And the first thing you asked me to do, even though I joined as a media guy into your company, was go into the jungle <laughs> in Rana Run Sabah and look for people that need help. And I just went, you know, this is my own thing. And like, God is listening to me. You know, that's why I said, I don't believe it's a coincidence. I believe it's fate. I believe that it was fated to, to meet up again after many years, that, you know. And then suddenly, you know, why would he offer me to do this? He could offer a host of other people he knows, right? And how's it been so far? It's been awesome. It's been great. Because, wow. you know, we get to do things what we want. And also, we're still helping people. It's, it and takes a few more interesting boxing. announcements coming up, right, soon? Oh my God, yeah. Can't talk about it yet, but soon. Yes, yes. That's going to be shocking. But what, what we can tell people is the fact that, you know, one of my biggest dreams was always, you know, why can't a Malaysian film be in Hollywood? An Oscar contender. And an Oscar contender. Why? Why? The reason is we don't have the funds. And... That's it. Soon, That's all soon, I'm going to say. That's soon. all I'm going to say. Soon. <laughs> Akan datang. Akan datang. Akan datang. Okay. Now let's take the next step. Mm. You went into politics. Okay. Well, well you joined yeah. a political party. I joined a political party. Yeah. Can you tell me 
what what that process is for you. Why? If you were to ask me, what is the one thing that you would change in your life if you knew what life was going to be like, right? One of the things I would say was I would have been braver to make a stand. Being in the industry, we always live in. We we are artists, which we want to be free. We want to do all these things, but we live in in the confines of rules and regulations within uh, the system that that has been around for sixty years or whatever. You know, for what, how many over years that there are things you can do, you cannot do. If you cross this line, so as an artist, okay, you you want us to be as creative as possible to do the stories, but you don't allow us to do. This you don't allow us to do this. You don't allow us to do this. You know this, and 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 I say, what kind of creativity, you know, is this? You know, everybody will end up doing the same kind of stories because you're not allowed to be able to say anything, right? So my the thing that I would have changed was to I would have been more vocal. I wouldn't probably wouldn't have the career that I had because I would be shut shut down early on. But I think there's something to say about. Taking stand, but then the right thing to do. You did the right thing. You did what you believed, yeah. uh, and you didn't put monetary gain. You didn't put that in, in in ahead of what you thought was the right yeah. thing to do. Now that's something special, and not many people do that yeah. at this stage. Also, it's you about know? our kids, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, what you're leaving behind, and also showing them yeah. the way. Yeah, what is important, right? Yeah. I I think I'm at a better place right now in my life where I believe, for once, my kids are, are looking at me taking a stand. Maybe that was the step I didn't take. Because of fear that I would lose the little things I had that that were controlled by the government, you know. And in the end, I didn't rely on the government at all. Yeah. But it was just the fear keeping me in line, right? Which is probably the fear that's kept the arts industry yeah. down, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. the ability just to grow and just to you know just to do whatever they think yeah. they need to be done. Look, I can hate it, yeah. but someone else might love it. Exactly. But the point is, yeah. it's allowed to bloom. Exactly, you know, so that all facets can be yeah. seen. Yeah. Why is it wrong for somebody to write a song about how the people are feeling? Yeah. Why is it wrong to make a movie to show uh, what the conditions of the people are right now and what they're going through and what the how what oppression is being done to them? For me, those are the things which are the sign of the times. And this is the actual work of filmmakers, okay. or even people in the entertainment industry. That's why I have such great respect for Indonesia, for example. You can do whatever, but their arts don't touch their arts. You know, you know. We know how how patriotic Indonesians are about Indonesia, right? And that's because they've been fed this patriotism. You must look at this this leader. He he. You know what he did for us. You must look at this uh, badminton player. You know what they they did for us. They create heroes. Here, we don't want to create heroes. You know, this is what I feel. The system doesn't want us to bring up people to create heroes amongst us, because. Well, maybe that should change now. I do believe that. You know, and you're you're in a. That's the way. Forward. I mean, you and I both believe that the medium of entertainment mm. is the one medium that can connect with the people. Yes, definitely. Inspire them, lift them up, build them up, give them give them the strength to. To believe in what they actually, in yeah. their soul, want, right? So, um, good luck with that. I mean, <laughs> good luck to us. I, <laughs> I have a lot. Now we have some rapid fire questions for you. I've been told anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? You, your birthday is on the sixth, right? Oh yeah, six August. Yeah. So you also getting old, right? Bro, <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind. So I'm always young and you know. So you're fifty three. Fifty three, old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, God. I tell you one thing, ah, huh? our fathers. Era, mm. two years compulsory retirement already, you know. What the? You won't play more again. Yeah. Huh? We're forced into retirement. Can you imagine that? Oh we've reached god. that stage. Oh my god. But I still feel sexy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look sexy. We're we're closet sexy. We're closet sexy. Yeah. We're closet sexy. Absolutely, <laughs> man. I saw a picture of you when you were seventeen. One of the old pictures of you when you were seventeen when we were when we were friends. Damn, we were both good looking. Yeah, yeah. During our time uh, for the Malaysian uh, Muda concert, when you walk by, I just like. Wow, who is this guy? I know. I'm. I'm like, <laughs> who is this yeah, sexy guy? <laughs> I know. I mean, you too. I mean, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. But no, we just have more sexy enough now. Yeah, yeah. Right. We decided we needed more for people to share. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe we got carried away with the more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know. 
But anyway, now we have we have these questions for you. Okay. So, a Malaysian culture you love the most? Joget. Joget. You just like the tight dresses lah. It comes with the joget. <laughs> That's true. That was, okay. All right. What was your childhood nickname? Oh, it's actually Lin. Lin? <laughs> yeah. I was so, I've always been embarrassed. My mom, you know Lin is a girl's name, right? I know. That's why I was embarrassed. So Aflin Lin. Uh, Aflin. My name is Aflin, right? Yeah. So my mom would call me Lin. Lin. My grandparents would call me Lin. And I was like, hey, Lin is a girl's name. Bro, I'm going to start calling you Linda. <laughs> no! Oh my gosh. No, no, You know, no. every time I see you, it's when I, Hey, Lynn, darling. Hey, Lynn. Come over here, Lynn. Uh, it's now Lynn. It's now Lynn. Oh, this is good. This is good. Oh, no. um, okay, something you do not like doing. Apart from being called Lynn. <laughs> something I do not like doing. Dieting? Uh, no, I'm not adverse to dieting. Whenever I need to do a film, I'll diet. But they have, they've got to pay me to diet. <laughs> Ooh, this is a tough one. Tough one? Yeah, because I do any, almost anything. When a bit younger, I would scuba dive, I would jump off a plane, I would... I, 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 there's, there's nothing that a friend would say, let's go do. I wouldn't do. Okay. Yeah lah, I wouldn't eat pork. You wouldn't eat pork? Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> That's a cop-out, but fine. <laughs> you won't eat pork. Okay. We will, we will stick to that. Yeah. We will stick to that. Strangest thing that you have eaten. Okay, obviously not pork. Yeah. <laughs> Strangest thing you have not that you have eaten. Uh, a balut, I, I would say. Oh, you mean that's that embryo, embryo eggs? Yeah, uh. yeah. Embryo. You gotta take the bloody things out of your mouth. The, the, the bones are still. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh yeah, it's from Philippines, right? Yeah, Philippines. in Manila, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you actually I mean, eat I mean, it? Yeah, yeah. Bro, I cannot eat vegetables. You want me to try that? <laughs> Yeah, but it's How long have you known me? That, I cannot... That's not a vegetable. I know, but if I'm freaking out over vegetables, <laughs> over, you know, <laughs> over things that are weirder than chicken and steak and lamb, you think I'm going to eat that? Okay. Just think of it as... Did, did you actually enjoy it? I think my mind blanked out the whole experience. <laughs> you know, just like... I'm with my Filipino friends and they're, hey, you got to throw it in the balloon. And they're like... Okay. Uh, Never again, though. Never again. (laughs) Okay. If a movie was made of your life, Uh, what genre would it be? It would be a drama. A drama. Yeah. Yeah. Just a drama. I would. I would. Yeah. I would say so. But with a happy, feel-good ending. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. We we don't know the ending yet, but. I would, we I would, manifest our ending. <laughs> yes. I would say, yeah, an ending that... that inspires. Mm, inspires people, yeah. I suppose, I mean, yes, that would be good, right? Your life is inspiring. So, I, that's what I'm trying to guide my life to be. You know, and I, I hope it inspires some people. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, I want to inspire everybody. But if I inspire one person, if I inspire my kids, I think that would be... A big win for me. Good, good, good. Wait. What? <laughs> you think you only got questions. Okay. I also got questions for you. Okay. A rapid fire to to you, okay? This is this is my first question. What is the first thing you do or what is the first thing you think about in the morning? In the morning? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you might think that. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. But anyway, <laughs> what is the first thing I think about? Actually, it is quite a sad. <laughs> but the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning is, do I get up and actually have my breakfast? Or shall I skip breakfast, have coffee and try to lose some weight? <laughs> That's normally the first thing I really, think yeah? about. Yeah. You know, I wake up, ooh, nak makan? Could I skip makan? Yeah. As strange as it is. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I just go like... Wow, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> no, that's my daily thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a heart that operates at 20%. Yeah, exactly. Oh it's my, my daily, daily, daily issue. Yeah, okay. Next question. If you have to sing karaoke, what song would you pick? Okay, this is a song <laughs> that was stolen and used inappropriately by Tun Mahade and some other people. <laughs> but it is my song. <laughs> Frank Sinatra's My Way. Right, right. The Sinatra version. The Sinatra version? Yeah. 
Not the new guy, what was his name? Buble's virgin. Not Buble's, not, not, not the 96 year olds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not anybody else's. Is the Sinatra. Is one. my song. Yeah. I lay claim to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, MACP will have things to say with you. Uh, who was your childhood actress crush? Childhood actress crush? Ah. Ah, yeah, come on, lah. when you were 13 years old, 14 years old, that big movie was Blue Lagoon. Oh. Remember Brooke Shields? Brooke Shields. In yeah, Blue yeah, Lagoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, now you remember, right? So, yeah, I mean, how to get that out of your head? Yeah, yeah. You know? Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields in Blue Lagoon. What <laughs> would you choose as your secret superpower? My secret superpower? Yeah. I would hope it's my ability to make people smile without them even realizing it. Right. How, okay, how many smiles do you get in a day when you. When you, you know, in your presence. All the time. Everyone yeah. smiles. Yeah. See, behind the camera, smiling already. <laughs> They're smiling already behind the mask. Is it because of fear or because in general, you make people smile? I think I'd like to think general, you <laughs> make people smile. I mean, you know, fear is different. Yeah. Yes, maybe there's a modicum <laughs> of fear. The freaking chairman is walking down, right? He looks in a bad mood or good mood, I'm not sure. Yeah. Either way, we'll just smile. But you can tell, right? <laughs> the, the smile will be more like... Look, I'd like to think I make people comfortable. Yeah. You know, and and I think, really, it's the, the smile reflects one thing. I think I make people comfortable to talk to me. Mm. They feel they can open up, you know? And, you know, they be themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, people do get comfortable around you. What annoys you the most? Ignorant, shallow, stupid people. Ignorance I can teach. Mm. The problem is I have very little time for it because they mm. shouldn't be ignorant. Mm. There's the ability to learn everywhere around you. Yeah. And you've chosen not to. Yeah. Right? Stupid also, I can make less stupid. Right? Shallow, hopefully I can try and get them to be a bit deeper yeah. and more understanding. So while these three annoy me, it's things I can fix. Right? right? If I really wanted to, and if they wanted to, we, get, we can fix it. Disloyalty. Mm. That's the one thing you cannot buy mm. You cannot change. Mm. Mm. When people are disloyal, they are not trustworthy. Mm. Right? Because then it's all a pretense. Mm -hmm. You can't change that. Right? You can't change them, you can't buy it, you can't teach it. Mm. You either are or you're not. Mm. And I think those are the kind of people that annoy me most. Those are the kind of people that I have absolutely no time for. Right. What do you think causes disloyalty? You must understand, disloyalty means there was loyalty, right? Yeah. Disloyalty means yeah. you were loyal or you are loyal. Yeah. And disloyalty means you do something outside that. Mm. Now, it can be greed. Mm. It can be ambition. Uh, it could be SPRM. It could be SPRM. <laughs> it could be threats. Yeah. It could be threats. You and I both know what they've done, try to do to us. Yeah. To make us change our position, to make okay. us change our mind. Yeah. Right? Um, so the question is, how strong are you? Yeah. Right? Um, how strong are you when somebody dangles like... Hundred billion dollars in front of you. In right? front of you, yeah. dangles. You know this will change your life. Yeah. Dangles. This will make you powerful. This will make you uh, a politician, a minister. This will make you anything, whatever. Right? Here's yeah. a contract that's going yeah. to make your career, your business. To me, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Good guys win. It mm. takes a bit longer. It hurts a bit more. But ultimately, yeah. good guys win. The question is, can you remain the good guy? Yeah. Because along the way, you're going to be. They'll offer you, dangle you offers, mm, threaten you, yeah. threaten everyone around you. Exactly. Can you hold out yeah. and remain the good guy? And if you do, you will win. 100%. Yeah. But can you remain? So, at the end of the day, I look at the situation in our country now, and I see the people willing to stand up. I see the people going out there and helping. Mm. Helping refugees. Mm. People like Heidi Kwa. Mm. And so many other organizations. Mm, mm. Um, you know, our own Yaya Snafrin Shauki. Yeah. The people that, uh, that work with you. Mm. The, the, our, founda our global foundation that goes mm. to Klang. And you but, see all the volunteers. Mm. You know, people think, wow, we're not so great. Lah. You know, Flynn, you know, you know, you know, all we did was pay for it. We did the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. But all those volunteers, yeah. all those people that give their time, their energy, their effort yeah. to actually do the work, yeah. to find the problem, to arrange, yeah. to take care of these people. Now, those are the real heroes. Now, for me, this period of society have shown what heroes Malaysians can be yes. Yes. and what fools Malaysian politicians can be. You know, because really, this pandemic 
has, has shown me without question, yeah. the real Malaysians out there are remarkable individuals, right? Do we need politicians? <laughs> Apparently the system says we do, fine, <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. You know, but it's the true Malaysians out there doing making the difference. Whenever it's a birthday, you know, people always like do their wish in their head, right? I want to know what you wish for. Because what else can you wish for? You've got a boat, you've got a jet. What is in your head right now? What do you wish for? Apart from Prokshio's 20 years younger. Yeah, and six packs. <laughs> and my six pack. <laughs> and my six pack. Apart from that. Okay. Apart from that. Bro, it's very simple. Honestly, and, and I know this sounds just like, you know, fluff, but I actually believe it. I wish for my nation to be the country that I know it can. Mm. That's it. Because if we are the country that it should be, we are the shining, bright house on the hill mm. that everyone looks up to, mm. that everyone wants to be like. We have the potential to show the world how to live together, how to thrive together. We have it all. And it's just sad that we are betraying that hope. Mm. We're betraying that potential at the moment. But I think we can get back to it. It needs leadership. Mm -hmm. It needs nation builders. And I believe there are nation builders. I believe there's enough leadership. So my hope, my real hope for my birthday, is that Malaysia becomes the country Malaysia was meant to be and that Malaysia can be. A thriving, multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, mm. multilingual country whose people don't just live together, who don't just work together, mm. but thrive together. Awesome. <laughs> Aflin, thank you for coming on to this little show. We will do this again yeah. when we have some announcements to make, That's perhaps. Right. That's right. Because That's you know right. we have some exciting announcements. Yes. So, till next time. Thank you for Thank having you. me on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Vinod Shaker. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Shaker Not Stirred. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and keep watching for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.